to give my bit on security breaches uh, and market share. And this is a follow-up to one of my uh, 2007 videos, which was titled Viruses and Market Share. And the point of that video was that the argument of using market share to explain away why a system experiences security breaches is just is bunk. Um, quite frankly, uh, to say market share is the reason invalidates security operating system design. And there are clear differences within operating systems on how far the actual uh, how far the actual exploit can go within the system and the areas it can reach and um, and the containment of it uh, and how, how from it being contained can it pervade so on and so forth so market share completely ignores that point which is a very very valid point and therefore that's market share really can't be used in that context you just simply can't ignore security system design so that is what I'm really after and I appreciate all the comments uh, and debates on on my uh, older um, virus uh, market share video so I've decided to do this follow-up to try to stress this point because a lot of uh, there are a lot of good points like okay well what if a user downloads a malicious file and that is quite a challenge for any operating system and there is no foolproof solution for complete user error or, or whether a person or IT manager fails to do a security update. But when I say that, like fails to update, to, to update or, or, to, or install that security update, should not simply say, well, the security uh, breach didn't exist or the exploit didn't exist because the existence of it says something about the system itself. And that's what I'm after. I am after how the history, let's say uh, specifically of Windows, and its design has led to many of its security breaches. And therefore, market share had nothing to do with it. And we'll take that and, 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 and compare it to, to Unix systems, Linux systems, um, OS X, uh, so on and so forth, because there are critical differences on how security is handled within these operating systems. So, getting to Windows, uh, I've had some users say, well, you're citing historical things. Well, that is valid, citing historical things, because the point that I'm trying to make, again, is that the system was a culprit, whether it was back then or whether it is today. They simply existed, and they were system flaws, and that's my point. So it doesn't matter if it was at the beginning or, or where we are within the, the, with the progression of uh, Microsoft operating systems, it was the system design that, that led to much of the exploits. So rehashing that, something I talked about in my behind the bit uh, video was the single user role that um, Microsoft started off with that haunts them to this day because they, they, they certainly had multi-user and multi-tiered systems even starting with NT, but how they brought in that legacy of their older systems like, nine, like 95 and then their 16-bit systems and then how they later merged and changed the vision of NT from being just workstation into their retail side and then uh, uh, getting to the systems that we have today. The way they brought in some of that, the, uh, that legacy and those decisions preserved a lot of those exploits and or allowed variants of those exploits to be reused and, and, and then create security breaches. And those are decisions that Microsoft makes. It's nothing that a, that a user can download or say, um, or do, I should say, to the operating system. It is simply an exploit within the system that the system has, and there's nothing that a user can really uh, do about it. The other examples I also, I also gave in that, in that video were uh, like the Slapper Worm versus Code Red and how far, because Apache has a greater market share than IIS does, but yet it didn't it didn't experience the amount of catastrophic failures uh, and security breaches that IIS did. And that what is a difference of system design and how it handles security. So, it, of course, we can come to today, and I will give kudos to to Microsoft for their UAC because they have they have done a great job in one getting security patches out there. 
and the UAC is a great layer in um, uh, preventing a lot of these security breaches. Uh, although I know that there is a, a current virus out there that I, I was reading about that is a variant of a, a Win32 worm that is, I think, affected uh, several million PCs. But now we could say, yeah, there's a patch for it that I believe was out since October that the IT managers didn't update it with. But it doesn't ignore the fact that the specific exploit is a network service within the RPC um, protocol of, of, of Windows and it affects from Windows 2000 to Server 2008 which means that specific network service was never changed or really updated and that could be used as a form of legacy staying with the system and thus all of those systems are being affected with that specific network service. Now does this mean that Unix and Linux and OS X are perfect? No. This does not mean that. It does mean that there are, are differences on how OS X, Linux, and Unix can contain these things. For instance, uh, the root the root user being locked down on OS X that protects very critical areas uh, of the kernel within OS X and creates a sandbox implementation in many regards of how separate an application or a download of a file is from critical uh, services within the operating system and how far well is it well, is it going to be contained so on and so forth then we can go into other services like directory access control and then the MAC framework uh, which is getting even more granular and uh, will be implemented in Snow Leopard um, uh, per, to, for prevention of uh, malicious um, attacks within processes and, and things like that then you can also talk about uh, ASLR, which is is a way of scrambling, let's just say, memory locations, which Windows also has an implementation of, um, which Symantec says is, is buggy, and Snow Leopard will have the full implementation of that, uh, from what I understand, where there's a partial implementation currently within Leopard. Um, but what, these types of things within Unix, within its in, in inheritance scheme, versus a single user role and those legacy apps coming in but while the UAC is preserving a type of uh, inheritance um, that has always really been there within the Unix model and uh, suffice it to say um, the uh, there like BSD offered a lot of these security protections that inherently OS X inherited from the use of BSD and they but they have of course their own implementations of it I mean Apple does does do their own stuff I mean they take it and then they'll do their own thing with it but this was a journey for Microsoft so while we are where we are now with Microsoft and there there are there are exploits out there quite frankly not as many uh, as they used to have and they, like, because they have done a far better job we, are, we cannot simply state that market share is the reason for Microsoft's vulnerabilities throughout its entire history. If I haven't mentioned it before, ActiveX's, the uh, op automatic opening of attachments within emails, there's just a lot of crazy things and decisions that, that uh, Microsoft had to make. Now, they probably have very valid business uh, reasons. Uh, for that thing and because they have addressed these and uh, I have experienced most of those exploits because I, I have to heavily use Microsoft Windows uh, as most of my clients use it so I heavily program on it so I have experienced a hell of a lot of these uh, exploits so I don't really want to make this a whole versus match because it is not fun when somebody gets a uh, security breach. It's just, uh, I don't wish that upon anybody. 
Um, but I'm just tired of the whole market share excuse for exploits. Microsoft has learned. They're getting really good at um, uh, having sandbox implementations and um, uh, stopping some of these security breaches today. So that uh, is that, and um, I hope I got my point across. Uh, I, I welcome more comments and debate if I've uh, left anything out. Um, anyway, thanks for watching.